I'm interested in just like being in the world, really just immersing myself and telling stories that already exist. Because I mean, looking around, it's pretty interesting and exciting already. Eileen, you have an older brother, Iwei, who graduated from Chinese International School in 2011, and a younger sister, Imei, who is currently with us in year nine. You yourself joined CIS in reception and stayed on Braemar Hill all the way through senior graduation in 2013. You then studied English and creative writing at Yale University and have become an extraordinarily accomplished writer across all forms of nonfiction. Eileen, how long have you been writing of your own volition? I would say my earliest memory of writing would be seven-ish onwards. Uh, it was a combination of me journaling every other day. I would just write down what I did today, who I saw, just kind of everyday life. And also I wrote a novel called The Gods and the Devils, where this young girl kind of is uh, thrown into a world in which the gods are fighting the devils and she has to pick sides. Um, and it was handwritten and I like had it in a little cardboard book. Um, and then my dad bought it from me. So he was my first publisher and reader, you could say. What language did you choose to write in those first instances? I definitely feel most comfortable in English. Um, and the language with which I kind of make sense of the world through the written word has always been English. Chinese is the language that I really associate with kind of the spoken, intimate world, you know, like it's the language I speak to with my family. Um, I do most of my interviews now in China and for my work entirely in Chinese. So listening and speaking has always been the language that I associate with Chinese. I wrote in Chinese all throughout CIS, evidently, and then I'd say when I went to, when I was at Yale, my junior summer, I was, I just felt that I needed to remedy the kind of like analytical thinking literary mind in trying like I wanted to make up for that what I perceived to be a lack and so I went to uh, Taiwan for three months and kind of read a lot of Guwen like ancient literature um, and really started to develop the vocabulary um, that I wanted read the questions I was thinking about in English because I was so immersed and learning about old Chinese scholars from like the ancient times who are grappling with questions of like, to what extent do I follow authority versus, you know, go like challenge the status quo. Um, I found myself starting to think about and put together ideas in Chinese. It was hugely rewarding. You think that. that there's a connection between being able to speak multiple languages and being creative? It has a direct relationship to creativity in so far that plurilingualism equals diversity or like it, it is a, it's like a key. It's a way to truly access another world, the, the insight and mind of another person. Um, and, and that understanding of the other, I think, is totally linked to creativity. How do you choose the subjects about which you're going to write? The way that I've narrowed it down has been China. And then within China, even though it seems like my writing kind of sprawls across a bunch of different topics, um, the people that I've found myself to be interested in are those who are trying to challenge a system from within. So they are not dissidents, they're not exiles, they're not uh, outsiders, but they have also not compromised or succumbed to a system. And there's actually a lot of people like that. So that still is actually, funnily enough, not narrow enough of a pool, but um, basically every single piece that I've written, most of them fall under that, that bracket. What advice would you give to young people about finding their own voices? I feel like 60-year-old writers still find their voice. Um, a better way of framing it is as an investigation. What are the questions that you are drawn to? Um, passion 
I'm kind of stay away from because it implies something that's like fixed. Um, whereas investigation is, it's, it's, it's ongoing. It never ends. Like I've always felt that I understood myself much more when either A, I've encountered somebody very different from me and have been forced to explain myself. Um, and then B, when I've been thrown into a situation that's super different and out of my comfort zone and I've had to adapt. How important is it for young people to see themselves and experience themselves as the authors of their own stories? It is extremely important, but it doesn't have to be preemptive. Like, it doesn't have to be like, and I know what I want to be like when I'm 24, you know, and like, I have this ideal vision of myself at 50, and I can see all the plot points and inflection points, and I know how I'm going to write them. I think it's more like the day to day. Like, I, it, it's not so much a story of your life as much as the story of your day. Like what kind of person do I want to be today? What are your thoughts on this planetary phenomenon known as the COVID-19 crisis? In particular, how can young people make the best of the very difficult situation with which they're faced? It's gonna be the first of many more types of crises, either public health or political that are gonna come. Like I'm just looking at the, what the students are going through in 2019 to 2020 the school year. It's the protests, which, you know, Hong Kong is one of six continents that have been swept by protests. And then now COVID-19, which like could go on indefinitely. And I'm pretty sure it will not go back to normal. What I tell my sister is like, embrace that uncertainty. You're not going to know what your life is going to be like in the next three months, in the next year, in the next five years. Don't be wedded to things that are that are unchanging, like a job or a dream that's unchanging. Um, on a very practical level, do the same thing every morning. When there's all this change, like you must be able to hold on to something concrete. And for me, it's been like stretching 15 minutes in the morning, you know? And then from a broader perspective, be okay with change. Be okay with the loss of an old way. Like don't accept like, a new normal if you see something wrong with it but you know like learn to adapt to it and i actually think that younger people are better at it like students are better at it than i am i've actually got a lot of faith in in young people to just like get on with it there's so much like downtime now quote unquote fertile solitude um and so the key is to really like take advantage of that solitude if you have a three hour stretch in the evening of uninterrupted quiet time, that's like the perfect opportunity for someone who's drawn to some type of creative pursuit to compose, to write, to paint, to, to code. And then know that when all of this is over, there will be all this creative output. If you could pick one author from any country speaking any language, who would it be and what would you ask them? Like, I mean, the, the trope would be Shakespeare. <laughs> like, which character resonates with you the most? Like, who are you? Because Shakespeare probably never found his voice because he just assumed so many others. Probably like a, like a, a political leader. Probably like Xi Jinping. Where, where are you planning on steering the wheel? That's what I'd ask him. <laughs> yeah. Ewing, when you were seven years old, your mother gave you a journal that became an extraordinary means of discovering yourself and the surroundings in which you were growing up and of forging an identity and a life full of openness, creativity, and hope. What you have given us today in this short conversation is a similarly invaluable invitation to engage with the circumstances of our times and to write a story for ourselves and for other people that will make a positive difference in the world. Thank you, thank you, thank you.